uh, flour, like protein content of like 11.2 percent, which is around like kind of medium, like kind of medium, like high. And but like ash content of like you know, like remember like ash content, ash content of like 0.34 percent, which is like really low, even like for Japanese standard, it's really low. So like you know it's even like it would give you like very whitish um, colored uh, noodles. And so for that's the solid ingredients and for liquid ingredients, right? Uh, we have a kansi, one percent to the weight of flour and one salt, one percent weight of flour. And this is the water, water uh, that's thirty-three percent to the weight of flour. So like in total, thirty-five uh, percent hydration ratio. Okay. And yeah, so let's start making the dough. So the machine we have, we have over here uh, has a uh, 10 kilograms mixer. So 10 kilograms mixer, so you can mix up to 10 kilograms of solid ingredients. And but on top of it, you're adding liquid ingredients to it. So a maximum, you may be able to like, make like 14 kilograms of dough at a time out of this mixer. And the minimum batch is four. Minimum is four, four kilograms of uh, solid ingredients. So we are doing four now. And she's, she's dissolving uh, kansi and salt into the water. So we first need, need to make this solution and liquid and then add it to the flour in the mixing. So we just wanted to kind of mix it for like one minute, like just with the solid ingredients to kind of crush like a, a big chunks of flour, like in small pieces. And we're adding this two thirds of the liquid first uh, onto the lid, which has like small holes. See the liquid is like dripping through the holes, right? To be added to the flour a little by little. This This helps um, promote like good hydration of flour. And this 35% hydration ratio, and remember from the lecture, you know, the medium, this is medium water content noodle, so the mixing time is kind of in the middle, like 10 minutes. We can wait, just looking at it like for 10 minutes. So she prepared the dough in advance. So this is how we rest the dough after mixing. See in a plastic bag, right? Shield it to prevent from drying. And then, you know, let sit at room temperature for an hour. And this is the 35% hydration ratio dough. So that to the crumbles, the size of crumbles, uh, slightly bigger than uh, low hydration ratio noodles like uh, Hakata style ramen noodles, like tonkotsu ramen noodles. So basically what we're doing is that like we are, we are feeding the dough to the, this machine has a set of rollers and then you can control the, uh, the clearance between these two rollers by this wheel. And then, so we are feeding the dough into the set of rollers, which has, which now has 1.5 millimeter roller gap. It's, it's very narrow, this roller gap, right? And then the dough goes through it to become sheet of dough. But it's still, still pretty rough sheet of dough, because it's, because it's just right out, of, right out of the mixer.
Yeah, by the way, this machine is called uh, Rich Man One machine. Rich Man, Rich Man One machine is like rich plus one, a man, man, uh, man, man, man can also mean like in Japanese, like noodles, rich man, um, one. And this machine is uh, capable of producing up to around 100 servings of fresh noodles in an hour. And um, so I, I said, like, this is 35% hydration ratio noodle, right? And let's say, like, this is this is 10, right? Pretend that this is 10 kilograms of dough last hour. So that the total weight of dough would be, like, 13.5 kilograms of dough. And out of it, right, one portion maybe um, in, in Japan typically, right, so 120 to 130 grams per portion. So basically, basically like 13.5 divided by 130 grams. So you're looking at maybe like 100 plus like a few few servings. So yeah, from from is yes, from like one batch. Uh, you should be you should be able to make 100 servings, about 100 servings. So in other countries, like other uh, types of uh, types of noodles, like sukeme noodles, the serving size is bigger. So the uh, the total total number of servings you can get out of uh, one batch will be like maybe maybe small. But, uh, basically, you know you can do the calculation. So after, so that was like just the initial like sheeting process, and then um, the dough is still it's pretty fragile. It's like still pretty weak. Like you can you can rip it apart like pretty easily. Uh, so you want to you want to make it firm. You want to make it stronger by actually like separating it to two sheets, and then combining it combining these two separate sheets into one again through the rollers. So that's how you how we uh, make, make this dough sheet stronger, firm. And we are we are going very, very slow in this uh, shooting process because we want to we want to put a lot of like good pressure on a dough and this this helps develop a uh, gluten structure further in, inside dough So the flour we talked about, right? The protein is like 11.2 percent, which is a just a bit like kind of kind of in the middle, like for for uh, flour for ramen noodles, which is typical like higher higher than the other types of noodles. And so again, the the protein content is high, which means that like the noodle texture will be like harder. But like water ratio wise, water ratio that's 35 percent, it's like in the middle. So it's it's yeah. In terms of hardness, that's that's in the middle medium. And so then that that should like sort of like determine the uh, the noodle size. So noodle size, you know, we we talked about number 20 or 1.5 millimeter being the medium middle middle size. So we wanna go like slightly, slightly thinner to have the uh, the right kind of texture. So that that sort of like helps you determine the the noodle size, the cutter. And again, like we after we did that like first combining process, like we are doing it for the second time, just to make sure that the dough is firm enough, and
And so after the second combined process, up to second combined process, we want the dough to stick together, right? Because we, we want it like we want the new, the two sheets of dough to be combined to become one. But like after second combined process, where we don't have to do it, like so. But instead, like we don't want it. We want we don't want them to stick together. So to prevent the dough sheet from sticking, we, we start dusting. We start dusting and and we want to make sure that the length of the sheet is even to make sure that these uh, these sheets are doubled. Um, evenly to complete the uh, combining process. So after second combining process, all we have to do is just thin it, thin it to the final thickness. So after second combined process and just just thinning it, right? So we we can go faster. We can go we can go this um, we can let the cheating process like faster. The mixing is done. So again, we talked about like flour, the protein content being a bit high and hydration ratio, water ratio, 35%, kind of medium. And um, so we're gonna cut it, but like we, before we cut it, right, we want to measure the actual thickness because the actual thickness is always bigger than the water gap we set. And that's 2.23-ish. So there's a difference of 0 0.8 between actual thickness and well, a gap we set, which was 1.5 millimeter. And to get to the final thickness that we want, right, we subtract this difference from the final thickness that we want to see. Want to see. And uh, because, like, the difference was the 8, 0 0.8 in meter, right? And we want to get to 1.4, uh, 1.2. 1.2 millimeter in thickness, so we want to set the roll gap to 0 0.6, so that we we expect the final thickness to expand back 
by 0 0.8 to become 1.4, uh, sorry, 1.2. And um, the cutter we use is this kind of cutter that looks like kind of like paper shredder. And Doshi like goes into that and comes out like strands of noodles. And each group is this one, 1.4 millimeter in width, each group. So that's, that's fixed. So each, the width of each noodle strand that, that comes out from noodles is fixed, right? But the thickness you control by the roller gap, roller. And number 22, 1.4 millimeter, like, you know, we talk about like different noodle sizes, right? And number 20, 1.5 millimeter being the middle the middle, uh, number 22, 1.4 millimeter is a bit thinner, a little bit thinner than the medium size. Because even though the protein content of flour is a bit high, uh, the water hydration ratio is medium. So we don't want to go all the way to the thinner side, but like we want to stay closer to the medium size. And those noodles are coming now, and um, you can actually control it like the portion size by the length of the noodles. And you can control the length of the noodles by the volume. You can make it shorter for smaller size. You can make it longer for the bigger size, bigger portion size. And again, like for this type of noodle, uh, portion size is typically, typically in Japan, like 120, 130 grams, or maybe like even less or bigger, um, depending on the restaurant shop. And you see, you can make them really long bigger size. And in tsuke men and other types of noodles, typically they are thicker. So even though like the length of the same, length is the same, the portion size is actually, you know, ends up like being bigger, a lot bigger than the, this type of noodle because it's thinner. Because it's uh, because the skimmy noodles are thicker typically, and it like has more hydration ratio, bigger hydration ratio, like you know, con containing like more liquid weight. So even though they're the same length, the noodle size is, should be bigger. And you can make noodles curly automatically or like by ma manually. And it's of course um, for like how you store them, right? We talk about like a third resting process. So usually we have like the water absorbing, moisture absorbing paper like lay on the, the bottom. Then uh, we put the another sheet of like water absorbing paper like on top and then um, put, in, put in the fridge. And they should be good for one week to two weeks. But uh, m most ramen shops like consume them like within like few days. No, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And today's topic is Tori Paitan. So let me just briefly talk about Tori Paitan. So Tori Paitan, uh, first of all, the Tori part, it means chicken. So it just explains uh, what kind of ingredient is used for the stock. 
So for Tori Python, chicken is mainly used. So the ingredients, some of the ingredients used for the stock is chicken carcass, whole chicken, chicken feet, and chicken fat. And Python, what Python means, direct translation is white stock. So what it means that the stock is emulsified and it's cloudy. Okay. But what is emulsified cloudy stock? So to explain what cloudy stock is, I want to talk about clear stock as well. And uh, we call it chintan, and it means clear stock. And for the clear stock, it's prepared at low heat and the stock is never rapidly boiling. So the oil and water is never mixed together. So that, so oil is never mixed into the water, so it keeps the water part uh, clear, and which you're gonna end up with clear stock. On the other hand, python, cloudy stock, uh, it's prepared at high heat, so stock is rapidly boiling. There's a lot of movement in the stock pot, so which makes that oil mixed into the water and these oil particles goes into the water and emulsify the stock and it makes the stock cloudy and creamy as well. Okay. So once again, it's called clear stock. There's less movement in the stock pot. The, bowl, uh, the stock pot is not rapidly boiling, so it's just like lightly simmering. And for the python cloudy stock, the stock pot is rapidly boiling to mix in the oil into the stock. Okay. So that's the difference, clear stock and cloudy stock. And for Tori Python, um, obviously we're using that white stock, uh, emulsified cloudy stock. Okay. So now I want to talk about the stock making method. I just want to talk about the stock making method briefly. So the first step for the stock making is to put all the ingredients into the stock pot. Okay. So in Tori Python case, you're going to put in chicken carcass, water, chicken feet, chicken fat into the stock pot. And now you bring that stock pot to a rolling boil. And when the stock pot starts to boil, um, this black dark color foam start to um, float up to the surface of the stock, and that's called scum. And that's the impurities from the chicken and all the other ingredients. So you have to remove this scum completely to um, make your taste, uh, make your stock taste pure and nice tasting. So this scum uh, will give that unpleasant taste to the stock. So you have to remove the scum completely. So once that scum removal is done, from that point, all you need to do is maintain that rolling boil until desired density. So what is density? So density is the thickness of the stock. So there's some, for ramen, there's some light, um, lighter soup, and there's some thick, creamy soup. So that's explained by the density. And we use this ramen soup density meter to measure the thickness of the stock. Okay. So what you do is um, you put one or two drops of that stock to this blue part and close the lid and just look through the meter and it shows you that percentage of the stock. And for Tori Python, um, roughly lighter type of Tori Python is around 6% and thicker type of Tori Python is around 10%. So you just aim for around this range and if you want some creamy, thicker Tori Python, just aim for the aim for the higher density. And if you're if you want, if you're looking for some lighter Tori Python, just aim for that lower density for the stock. And if you're looking for just a pure chicken stock, all you need to do is just keep simmering that stock until the desired density. But if you want to add in other ingredients, for example. If you add in some dry seafood into chicken stock, you're gonna end up with some tori yokai python. It means chicken seafood python. So if you mix these types of ingredients together, you're gonna get some synergy of that umami and it's gonna taste even better. 
the same goes for this. Uh, another example is um, if you add in some vegetables, for example, onion and potato, uh, you're going to end up with some tori python vegetable potage. Uh, that's another popular type of ramen in Japan. Okay. And as you keep uh, boiling that stock until that desired density, let's say you aim for 8%. And you reach that 8% density, that's when you strain the stock. And you strain the stock, and what you want to do right after is to quickly chill the stock so you can maintain the stock quality. Okay. So this is just briefly how to make that ramen stock. And if you're looking for like a um, detailed explanation of the stock making, this is a textbook used at a ramen school. And this talks about how to make the stock and also the flavoring sauce and the flavored oil and some toppings as well. So if you're interested, please contact us through the website and we'll reply back to you. Great. And now I want to uh, talk about our method of ramen making, so Yamato method of ramen making. So first of all, to make your ramen soup, you need some three elements. So first, the stock. So this is a creamy chicken stock. And next, you need the flavoring sauce. This is to season the stock. So the stock is not seasoned, so you need this flavoring sauce to give some uh, saltiness or some umami as well. And this is a flavored oil. This is to give the ramen soup uh, richness and also the aroma. Okay. So to make this flavoring sauce and flavored oil, um, you need maybe like 10, over 10 different types of ingredients. So it's very complicated. But at our, uh, at our ramen school, what we do is we prepare each ingredient separately. So for example, this one is soy sauce, and there's some umami, scallop umami into the soy sauce. Okay. And this one is some um, soy sauce with shiitake umami in it. And this one is salt motodare with some sardine dry sardine umami in it. And this is white miso paste. And this is dark miso paste. So at our ramen school, what we do is um, we have these parts. Think of these as a parts for a motodare. So what the students will do is that the students will take these parts and blend them up into their own preferred taste. And as they're blending the parts of these motodare, they record how much of each part they put in. And once the taste is perfectly into their own preference, preferred taste, they're going to end up with the recipe, their own original recipe. And same goes for the flavored oil as well. We have many different types of uh, flavored oil right here. So this is just a few examples. One is garlic oil leek oil, and this is chicken oil, chili oil, and black garlic oil. This is often used for tonkotsu ramen. So same goes for flavored oil. The students blend these parts for this flavored oil into their own preferred taste, and they have their own original. They're going to end up with their own original blend of flavored oil. And the reason why we take this method is because um, everyone have their own origin, uh, own preferred taste. So every country has their preferred like taste. So rather than us teaching the students just one specific type of recipe, we allow the students to make their own original flavor. Uh, so that's more valuable for the students. So we take this method. And also by understand. By understanding what goes into one bowl of ramen, the students will understand how to combine each ingredient to make that bowl of ramen. So they'll be able to make all sorts of types of uh, ramen. So they'll know how to make shio ramen, shoyu ramen, miso ramen, spicy miso ramen. 
So this is our method. This is our way of teaching our students how to make the ramen. And that's all also explained in this, this textbook. So if you're interested, please consider the textbook as well. OK, so now that the, that's explained, let's actually get Let's, let's actually start making that tori paitan. And today we're going, we're going to make tori paitan ramen and also tori paitan skimen. So I'll start off from making that tori paitan ramen. We're going to use this, this uh, thin medium hydration noodles for this tori paitan ramen. And we're going to use this thick, high hydration noodles for skimming. And this one's a little bit different because we blended some, uh, blend some black pepper into the noodle dough. And it's going to get kick, uh, it's going to give some little bit of kick to that noodles. Okay. So going to start off from heating up the stock. So this is that tori paitan stock. The density is around 8%. I'm just going to take one scoop of this chicken stock. So let's heat up the stock. And next. We're going to take that one scoop of this flavored oil, uh, flavor, sorry, flavoring sauce, motodare. It's going to take one full scoop of this flavoring sauce and one full scoop of this flavored oil. Okay. Now I'm going to boil these uh, noodles for chicken tori paitan. This boiling time will be around one minute. And make sure that boiling machine is rapidly boiling and put in the noodles into the basket for the first five or 10 seconds, what you want to do is mix the noodles. You don't, never want the noodles to clump up and um, clump up together. And you want to see the noodles moving around in the basket freely for that consistent boil. Good. So while the noodles are boiling, the stock is ready. So I'm going to take this, take one scoop of this chicken stock, one full scoop, and into the ramen bowl. Okay, five more seconds. And make sure to strain out the boiling water completely. This is going to dilute the soup. So strain out the water completely. Okay. And you want to put the noodles into the, that soup. And what you want to do is you want to lift up the noodles and line it up nicely. And for the toppings, we have chicken chashu. This one is a uh, sous vide, so it's nice and tender. And some red onion. And soft boiled egg. And thinly sliced green onion in the back and thinly sliced chili pepper on top of the green with a nice color. Okay, so this is how to prepare your tori paitan ramen. Okay, next we're going to make tori paitan skimen. 
So we're going to use this thick skim in noodles. And I think the boiling time will be around five to six minutes. So start boiling these noodles. Okay. Once again, once you put the noodles into the basket, mix for the first five or 10 seconds. So skim in noodles, what you do is you want to overboil the noodles. So you want to overboil the noodles so it's nice and soft. And then what you want to do is you want to wash the noodles and chill the noodles. Okay. So once you chill the noodles, the starch is going to harden. So that's why you want to overboil the noodles so that it's nice and soft. And then it's chilled so the starch hardens so it's perfect texture. Uh, once it's chilled. Okay. So think of the boiling time um, 1.5 or 2 times longer than when you're uh, serving it warm. So for these thick noodles, if you're serving these noodles uh, warm, boiling time will be around, I would say, 3 minutes. But since we're serving it cold, you want to boil it maybe 5 or 6 minutes and then chill the noodles. So now let's prepare that dipping sauce. So this is the chicken stock for skim in. The density is around 15%. It's a, little, it's a lot higher than the ramen. Okay, so I'm going to take one scoop. And one thing that's different when you're preparing your skim in is that you want to put the flavoring sauce and the flavored oil directly into that um, saucepan. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put in some fish powder in here as well. This is mackerel and urume powder. And a little bit, of, I'm going to add in some little bit of chili pepper for that kick, and I'm going to heat it up. The reason why everything's mixed in that saucepan is because um, skim in sauce is a lot thicker than the ramen soup, so it's a little bit harder to mix. So if you put everything into the bowl, it's not going to be consistently mixed. So that's why you want to put it into a saucepan. Everything's a saucepan and completely mix and heat it up together, and then put it into the bowl. Okay. Okay, so let's just wait for that dipping sauce. Let's just wait for that dipping sauce to heat up. I'm going to talk about the toppings. So we have, once again, we have that sous vide chicken chashu. It's nice and tender. And soft boiled egg, seasoned in soy sauce. And some tomato slice. Red onion slice. Mitsuba leaves. So, it's not connected. Ready? Okay. So, so, we have a question, what goes into that fish powder? So, once again, the fish powder, uh, I mixed some mackerel powder and urume powder. But it can be anything. You can use bonito powder as well, or even some scallop powder it goes well as well. So, anything works well but we like to use mackerel and urume powder. Okay. Okay, so the skim and noodles are cooked. So the noodle into the strainer.
And what you want to do is, first thing you want to do is to mix, I mean wash, and completely remove the starch around the noodle. And you remove that water once, and wash it, wash it one more time. And second time is to chill the noodles. And now what you want to do is you want to grab the noodles nicely so that you can uh, plate the noodles nicely onto the plate. So now that the noodles are ready, okay. so for the toppings, chicken chashu, tomato slice, sudachi citrus, and softball egg on the side. And some red onion on top. And Mitsuba leaf for that nice green. Okay. And that dipping sauce is ready as well. So I'm just going to pour the dipping sauce into the bowl. So this is how to prepare your tori paitan ramen and tori paitan tsukemen. And today we change it up by using black pepper noodles. We mixed in some black pepper into the noodle dough. So as you bite into that noodles, it's going to give that nice um, black pepper spiciness. It's going to give that nice kick to the taste. So it's, it's very interesting. So yeah, please, uh, if you're, <laughs> it's, give it a try. If you have some noodle, the noodle machine, you can make some noodles. Okay. So if there's some questions. Okay. So we have... We have a question, how long is a stock typically boiled for? So back to the board. So after the greens are into the stock pot and you do the scum removal, boiling time will be around six to eight hours. So in total, it can be up to eight to 10 hours. So if you're preparing um, stock that's density 8%, I would say just aim for around eight, eight hours of boiling time. So, uh, we have a question, was that a lime? No, this is a sudachi citrus. It's a type of citrus typically used for some Japanese cuisine, often used for soba and also udon as well. It's a little bit bitter and also very sour. And it goes very well with Japanese cuisine. And we have another question, how long will the stock keep after making it? So after the stock is ready and you quick, quickly chill the stock, that's important. So you can't just leave the stock um, to um, slowly cool down. You have to quickly chill the stock to maintain the quality. And then once it's quickly chilled, you put it in the refrigerator. And I will say it will last for around three days. Um, why we need to still chill the stock? It's because 
yeah, the bacteria will start to grow in the stock if you slowly cool down the stock. So you have to quickly chill down the stock so it gets, uh, it's just like you, can't, you have to get out of that dangerous temperature zone, which is around 20 to 40 degrees. So you have to get out of that dangerous temperature quickly as possible so that bacteria won't grow uh, as much and you can keep the stock uh, nice and safe. Okay, so that's about it from my side.